So in this part of the video tutorial we are going to be working in Adobe Photoshop CS3 and the first thing I'm going to be doing is importing this EPS file. Now I'm just going to drag and drop from my folder into here and you see this dialog box pop up so it's asking you what size you want it. This is where you've got to choose exactly how big your texture map is going to be for the eye. Now I think that 2K is more than enough for this. You can get away with 1K map easily. So I'm going to go for a 2K just to get all of that quality in there. First of all I'm going to change it from centimeters or wherever you may have. Make sure that it's in pixels. And I'm going to type in 2048 for a 2K map. And click OK. Now the first thing that you'll notice is, is we see nothing. Well the wire is actually there. We just can't see it at the moment. So what we do is we just go down to the bottom here where our layers are and we click on FX and we select stroke. Now you can see now instantly this wire appears. We just want to change the color from red to a black at the moment. And that's great. We'll click OK. Now for every other layer that we create from here onwards, we just make sure that this stroke layer that or with the stroke effect on always remains at the top. This means that we can always see the wireframe over the top and we don't have to keep on adjusting the opacity of our layers that we're actually working with. The wire will always be there. With that said, I'm going to go to the view menu and make sure that snap is turned on. And I'm just going to make sure that also rulers is turned on as well. See there, rulers, control plus R. And this is going to help aid us in a minute. So I'm going to drag one down to the center point. You can see here and the X and the Y. If we just turn off this layer for the minute. We can see we've got a center point where the actual eye is. Now we're going to make a brand new layer and we're going to drag this layer underneath the current layer that we've got which is obviously our EPS file showing the wire. Now I'm going to create a base layer at this particular point um, with a certain color that we want and I'm going to be using a gradient. This keeps things quite simple. So this is what we're going to do for the gradient. We're going to go over to the left hand side where the bucket fill is and we select the gradient tool. Make sure that we've got this type of gradient, a radial gradient turned on and we just click on this area here to edit it. Now you can keep on adding, you can see here, additional colors to the gradient just by clicking underneath here. I'm going to delete that and you want something set up so that we've got a pink going to a light gray blue. So that's to select this area here and it'll take a little bit of, of tweaking. So I want to go for my kind of dark kind of reddish color. And we want it to be like a grey kind of blue at the other end. Because the eye is never perfectly white. Let's try that. So we're going to drag from the centre outwards to the outer part of the actual eye. You can see what we've got at the moment. We've got the red in the centre and the grey towards the outside. So we just need to reverse this. So we do it the other way around. And we're going to need to tweak these anyway, so we'll just do that again. So from the center, to the outside. So that's a little bit hard at the moment. We can go in there and just tweak that, pull this out so we've got a better fall off there. A bit better. I still feel it's a little bit too harsh, so we're going to let this other color dominate it a bit more. From the center outwards, it's it's looking a bit better now. I think the red is probably a little bit too hard, so that's just changed this color slightly, maybe to a more of a pink. We can always adjust the saturation anyway, a bit later on. Well, that's more what I'm after there. 
so we've got this gradient right at the very beginning at this particular moment and that's what we want and I'm pretty happy with that now what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select the um, paintbrush here and select a size reasonably high that's it and I want it to be big enough that it's sort of like extending a little bit further out than where our iris is going to be and the color I want to select here will be a kind of gray kind of blue we just click once to see what we've got now they've got the opacity at 23 percent you can see up here so I can just click a couple of times that's not too bad I'm just going to go to the actual filter now and I'm going to apply a blur just to evenly blur this out um, I think this would be fine we're just gonna that's more like what I'm after and we apply that and that kind of deals with that layer for us now Let's just turn this back on now we're going to be working with the iris and for the iris I'm going to get it from online. So that's just snip onto um, Google and see what we find. Now, when I actually search on Google, you want to make sure that you type in um, I Iris, otherwise, you're going to get some flowers coming up. And ideally, you want to try and find one which hasn't got any specular hotspots on there. So we kind of look through. This one looks pretty good. We can get rid of some of these specular hotspots, but I'm sure we can find a better one. This one looks pretty good here and notice that I've selected large so we've kind of looked and scaled it down so we only seen large images here so choose whichever one that you um, think will be ideal for this that looks pretty nice there so I'm gonna go for this one right here yeah that's perfect I'm gonna click on this to see it full size so it's loaded up I'm just gonna simply drag and drop into an empty space in Photoshop and there it is